Poems Every Child Should Know, edited by Mary E. Burt. Section 53, read for LibriVox.org by Kara Schallenberg. This section contains the following poems. June, A Psalm of Life, and Barnacles. Part 5, On and On. June, June by James Russell Lowell, 1819-1891, is a fragment from The Vision of Sir Launfal. It finds a place in this volume because it is the most perfect description of a charming day ever written. What is so rare as a day in June? Then, if ever come perfect days, then heaven tries the earth if it be in tune, and over it softly her warm ear lays. Whether we look or whether we listen, we hear life murmur, or see it glisten. Every clod feels a stir of might, an instinct within it that reaches and towers, and groping blindly above it for light, climbs to a soul in grass and flowers. The flush of life may well be seen thrilling back over hills and valleys. The cowslip startles in meadows green. The buttercup catches the sun in its chalice. And there's never a leaf nor a blade too mean To be some happy creature's palace. The little bird sits at his door in the sun, A tilt like a blossom among the leaves, And lets his illumined being o'errun With the deluge of summer it receives. His mate feels the eggs beneath her wings, And the heart in her dumb breast flutters and sings. He sings to the wide world, and she to her nest, In the nice ear of nature, which song is the best? James Russell Lowell. A Psalm of Life What the Heart of the Young Man Said to the Psalmist A Psalm of Life by Henry W. Longfellow, 1807-1882, to is like a treasure laid up in heaven. It should be learned for its future value to the child, not necessarily because the child likes it. Its value will dawn on him. Tell me not, in mournful numbers, life is but an empty dream, for the soul is dead that slumbers, and things are not what they seem. Life is real, life is earnest, and the grave is not its goal. Dust thou art, to dust returnest, was not spoken of the soul. Not enjoyment, and not sorrow is our destined end or way, but to act that each to-morrow find us farther than to-day. Art is long, and time is fleeting, and our hearts, though stout and brave, still, like muffled drums, are beating funeral marches to the grave. In the world's broad field of battle, in the bivouac of life, be not like dumb driven cattle, be a hero in the strife. Trust no future, howe'er pleasant, let the dead past bury its dead. Act, act in the living present, heart within, and God o'erhead. Lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime, and, departing, leave behind us footprints on the sands of time. Footprints that perhaps another, sailing o'er life's solemn main, a forlorn and shipwrecked brother, seeing, shall take heart again. Let us then be up and doing, with a heart for any fate, still achieving, still pursuing, learn to labour, and to wait. Henry W. Longfellow Barnacles Barnacles by Sidney Lanier, 1842-1881, is a poem that I teach in connection with my lessons on natural history. We have a good specimen of a barnacle, and the children see them on the shells on the coast. The ethical point is invaluable. My soul is sailing through the sea, but the past is heavy and hindereth me. The path hath crusted cumbrous shells that hold the flesh of cold sea mells about my soul. The huge waves wash, the high waves roll, each barnacle clingeth and worketh dole, and hindereth me from sailing. Old past, let go and drop i the sea, till fathomless waters cover thee. For I am living, but thou art dead, thou drawest back, I strive ahead, the day to find. Thy shells unbind, 
night comes behind i needs must hurry with the wind and trim me best for sailing sydney lanier end of section 53 read by kara schallenberg on november 17 2006 in oceanside california